Hello, and welcome to this video, which is intended to introduce the Wintest amateur radio logging software to those operating in the CQ Worldwide DX SSB contest from Mike 4 Alpha for the first time this year. If you're going to be operating from a different station, you're welcome too, but be aware that some of the information may be different depending on the equipment in use at your QTH. Wintest is a specialist contest logging program with many powerful features for use in contests. It's important to realize that it is not intended for everyday logging, so if you haven't contested before, you may find the amount of information displayed intimidating. One of the great things about Wintest is that you can close any of the floating windows or drag them around on the screen, so you only need to look at the information you need, where and when you want to see it. Regardless of which floating windows you display, you always log in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Logging is easy. Just enter the call sign, then press space. Notice that the signal report we sent has been filled in automatically, as have the report and zone received. The cursor is now in the received zone field, since this is the information you are most likely to need to change. Assuming that the zone is correct, however, just press enter. There's no need to enter the frequency or mode because Wintest gets this from the rig automatically. C contest, C contest, Mike 4 Alpha, Mexico 4 America, contest. Italy Tango 9, Alpha Juliet Papa. Italy Tango 9, Alpha Juliet Papa, 5914. I 15. Thank you, Mike 4 Alpha. C contest, C contest, Mike 4 Alpha, Mexico 4 America, contest. Contest, contest, Mike 4 Alpha, Mexico 4 America, contest. Sugar November 9, radio. Oh, uh, Sugar November 9, radio 
This uses the SCP database to show you the call signs of stations which differ only by one character from the call sign you are logging. It's worth keeping an eye on this because in 2010 we lost points for 12 QSOs having hit adjacent keys on the keyboard while typing. N plus 1 may well have alerted us to these cases. Notice how N plus 1 alerts me to the fact I misheard DL for DK in this example. Contact number 5, Mike for Alpha, contest. Delta Kilo 8, Mike Bravo, Sierra, I think, 5914. Uh, is it Delta Lima 8, Mike Bravo, Sierra, QSL? Thank you, 5914, thanks, Mike for Alpha. In this case, you see that one of the call signs in the SCP window is green. This means that we've already logged this station on another band, so we know that he's on in the contest this weekend. Go ahead and work him. You may also see call signs in red italics in the SCP and N1 windows. This means that we have already spoken to that station on the current band. He's a dupe. Thus, we know not to waste our time contacting even before we have heard his full call sign. This is very useful when you're tuning around the bank. Of course, if we do try to lock his call sign, Wintest alerts us to a dupe as soon as we hit space to move between the fields. Use Alt W to clear the field. Wintest is integrated with the DX cluster, a global network that allows radio amateurs to say who is on which frequency and which we connect to over Telnet. Spots arriving from the DX cluster on one of the SHAC computers are rebroadcast by Wintest to all of the other computers in the network. As they arrive, incoming spots are added to the band map. This creates a map of the current band centered on your current frequency. The band map has many uses. One of the simplest is that it can help you to find a clear frequency to call CQ on by looking for gaps between stations in the map. Its primary purpose, however, is to help you find multipliers. Remember, CQ Worldwide is scored by multiplying the number of QSO points by the number of CQ zones and DXCC entities worked per band. Stations in the band map are colour-coded to highlight new zones and new DXCC entities, which are obviously worth most points. Unfortunately, the colour coding is not consistent with the colours used in the SCP window. Stations in grey italics are dupes, don't work them. Stations in green are new DXCC entities, but the zone has already been worked. Stations in blue are new zones, but the DXCC entity has already been worked. Stations in red are both new DXCC entities and zones, so are potentially worth a lot of points. All other stations are black. You may want to add stations to the band map yourself. This is useful if you hear someone who isn't in the band map, but you can't contact him right now. To manually add a station to the band map, without spotting it on the public DX cluster, enter the station's call sign in the log and press Control Enter. The station isn't logged but it appears in the band map on the current frequency, prefixed with a tilde to highlight it as being added locally. Once a station is in the band map, and when you are ready to make a QSO with him, check the beam heading calculated by Wintest and rotate the beam to that heading if necessary. Then just double click the call sign in the band map. The rig is retuned to his frequency and his call sign is added to the logging field automatically. To log the station, assuming that the zone guessed by wind test is correct, just press enter. Always check the call sign, people do make typos on the DX cluster. Depending on the band you are on and how busy it is, you may need to adjust the band map scale. To do this, right click the band map and select scale options. If you have made a tactical decision to concentrate on looking for multipliers rather than calling CQ, you probably don't care what frequency the station is on. You are more interested in seeing a simple list of all stations on the band. Click the List tab to do this. As implied earlier, Wintest is networked. You will see the other stations logged QSOs and any edits made to QSO information are also sent over the network. 
stations manually added to the band map are visible on all computers in the network. One warning, however. When Wintest is working in a network, you can't delete a QSO after logging it. To work around this limitation, edit the callsign to M4A, our callsign. I'll remove these before submitting the log. Note that this workaround may have an adverse impact on our score if we incorrectly think that we have worked the key multiplier on your band, so try not to get into this situation. The network is also used to synchronize logs. If Wintest crashes while you are operating, don't panic. Just restart Wintest. QSOs logged on the other station during the crash are automatically added back into your log when Wintest restarts. The other useful network feature is Network Gab, a sort of instant messenger for the Wintest network. To send a message to the other operators without interrupting them, use Alt G, type your message, then press Enter. The message is displayed in Wintest on the other computers for a few seconds before closing automatically. One of the critical things to be aware of while you are operating is your rate. The rate is the average number of QSOs you are making per hour. If your last hour rate falls below, say, 60 QSOs per hour during the night time, or below 120 QSOs per hour during the busiest periods, we are not making enough QSOs. Your rate, and the graft rate below it, can be a good indicator of when it's time to change band or move to a clearer frequency. Another thing to look at periodically is the continental distribution graph. This shows how many QSOs have been made with each of the continents in the last 15 minutes. Use this graph to help you decide whether a band is opening or closing in a given direction, being aware that the QSOs outside Europe are worth 3 points, but Europe is only worth 1 point. The grey line map can also help to understand propagation. You can't change bands at just any time, however. The contest rules say that, in the M2 category we enter at M4A, each station can only change band 8 times per hour. Wintest keeps track of the number of band changes you have made for you. Make sure that the number remains below 8 at all times. Some of the other parts of the Wintest window to watch are the score table, which shows how many contacts we've made and how many points we've scored, and the clock. The clock alerts you to operator changes and the end of the contest by colouring the time red around the top of each hour. Similarly, the sunrise and sunset times are coloured red around dawn and dusk to notify you of impending grey line propagation. That's an overview of some of the basic functionality that we use in Wintest, but there are many, many features that I haven't covered here. The crucial message is don't be worried by the amount of information shown. In a contest, interpreting data is often the difference between winning and losing, which is why so much is displayed, but we realise it can take time to learn how to use the information properly. To start with, just concentrate on logging the stations you work. Good luck!